My name is Aurika Savitskaita. I'm a co-founder of HelmetBasedVentilation.com. In this video, I will show you a helmet made by Italian company StarMed. Intersurgical is the company that will be distributing this helmet in the U.S. and uh, they received a FDA EUA approval back in August. So now in the U.S. we have two helmets that got that approval. It's the Starmet Coster R hood for NIV and Subself Oxygen Treatment Hood. This is how the helmet looks from a Starmet. And uh, you will receive a box with the helmet itself. It's a one-piece helmet, underarm straps, access port with a smaller diameter opening, instruction how to use the access port, and also measuring tape so you can choose the correct size for your patient. Other material that you will find is the fact sheets for the patients and healthcare providers. Also a booklet, how to start the NIV for the patients using the StarMed Health. What you will need to um, order separately is the bulk that is used to inflate the cushion. That, it's got, that is in a helmet. So I can tell you that this bulb uh, can be found in any ICU. If you're using any pressurized, uh, um, pressure bags for the uh, uh, infusion, you will have this bulb in your unit for sure. So the helmet itself, like I said, it's a one, one piece and uh, it has a hard ring. The ring has a nice curve on the side. And the reason why there is a curve is not just for the comfort, but it's mostly to prevent any leak that can happen in the front of the helmet. When the pressure in increases, you know, it can uh, rise the helmet up. This is when you have to adjust your underarm straps, but this curve, Will make it um, will make that seal much better. You have inlet and outlet uh, ports. It doesn't matter which you will choose for the input for the air or which one you will choose for your heat valve and the filter. But they are designed to reduce the noise in the helmet. Uh, I had a chance to talk with um, one of the bioengineers from StarMed and he explained how these, um, how these ports were designed to minimize the, um, the noise in the hood. If it's still noisy, what you can do, you can apply another viral filter uh, on, on the port and that's going to uh, reduce the noise in the helmet. Another great feature for this helmet is anti-asphyxiation valve and uh, it is this part that is a, a patient access uh, port. So you have a big patient access port that you can fit your arm easily. And if you need to do any patient care, you can do that without taking the helmet off. It's nice that it has a um, nice, it has a spring here. So uh, when the flow reduces in the helmet and it opens up uh, at uh, two centimeters of water of pressure. So it's a nice uh, safety feature. Other things you have here is the uh, two more access ports. Those can be used to give a patient fluids or uh, suction them. Also, if patient has any NG tubes or central lines, you can uh, move these uh, lines through these access ports and what is nice, it's opening like this on the side. So you put your line through it, then it's gonna seal very nicely and you will prevent any leakage. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 
and there is an additional cap for the access port. It has a smaller diameter hole, so in case if you have a very uh, small uh, tubing, this will work perfectly. What is very important, when you cl closing these access ports, you want to make sure that you close the little cap first and make it tight and only when this first cap is closed then you close the port. Uh, the reason why it should be done this way so it doesn't pop out so easily when the helmet gets pressurized. And what is nice, it is very well explained in that in, in this insert. Uh, so you have uh, on the front and in the back two buttons that you will use for the, your underarm straps to get attached. And uh, here is the tubing which will be used to inflate the uh, pillow that will be nice snuggling around the patient's neck. So I will show you how to put this on a patient. So first of all, you wanna make sure that you choose the correct size for the uh, patient. It's very simple measuring tape. And uh, as you can see, the helmet comes in six sizes. And when you measure the patient's neck, it will tell you what size you have to use. So I'm um, guessing I'm gonna need a small. This helmet is large, uh, so I will I have a model here who will use it for um, our later demonstration. What is important before you put the helmet on a patient? You have to have your air supply ready and connected to the helmet. You open the patient access uh, port, connect all your air flows, and uh, here I have, if we're gonna use this helmet for the helmet CPAP system, so here I have a connection to our wall gases, and on this side, I have a filter and a peep valve. Before uh, putting this on a patient, you definitely wanted to explain to the patient what the device is, how it's gonna feel at the beginning. You will have some pressure in the ears, but will go away. It can be noisy, and if it's uncomfortable, we can give the patient earplugs. And then how it's gonna be put on the head it's going to be two people, very gently, uh, we will take uh, the neck collar and stretch it out. So it is very smooth and easy application for the patient. What you want to watch for is for any lines that the patient may have, and G-tubes, central lines. Again, the system is already connected to the air. So uh, I'm just going to put this on myself now. All right. So when the helmet is on, before you do that, make sure you have your arm straps uh, connected in the back, okay? So then it's going to be much quicker and easier for you to adjust it when the helmet is already on. Uh, so when the helmet is on, you want to make sure you have all your lines going through the access ports, if it's applicable. And uh, uh, your air is already flowing. Check for your, uh, for your anti-asphyxiation valve. That, that always has to be done before you put the helmet on to make sure that this valve is moving. Then when you're ready, you put this, you screw it on tight, and it's very easy. And make sure that you pull it out 
so then there is no leak and the helmet will pressurize. When you take the helmet out, you do the same thing. First, you take the valve off. You make sure that you release the air from the uh, cushion, the pillow that is, was inflated during the therapy. And then again, you have two people who will stretch the neck seal nicely on both sides and take the helmet off the patient. So um, I'm really happy to see this design now here in US. There are many reasons why. First of all, Italians, as you know, are experts in helmet-based ventilation. We used it a lot for the COVID patients during the pandemic. We have multiple research papers published about the helmet and how it is superior to the face mask for the non-invasive ventilation. The helmet will not replace the ventilator. The helmet will give you another chance to prevent the intubation. And Italians put a lot of years and experience to develop this design to make it very uh, comfortable for the patient and also easy to use for the physicians. So thank you StarMed for bringing this helmet to US. Now what I will do, I will show you how it works with the airflow on my model whose uh, next size will fit this helmet. Thank you. Here we have our patient. We will measure his neck first. The size that he will need is large. You take the large size helmet, make sure that you connect your flow, your filter, and a P valve. In the back of the helmet, you attach your underarm straps. Also, you remove the patient access port. You want to make sure it's open. Check for the anti-asphyxiation valve. This valve should move back and forth when you pull. Also have your bulb ready so you can inflate the pillow. To apply the helmet on the patient, you will need two people. You will stretch the helmet gently on the side, from both sides. All right, you will help me here and stretch from this side. All right, again, you need two people to put it on. the collar so it lays nice uh, around the patient's neck okay move your underarm straps to the front and connect them up. there we go Again, very important that you have your flow going. Then you will need to close the patient access port and pull this. You can see how quickly it gets pressurized. And already we have no lead. But to make it more comfortable for the patient, and when you will increase the pressure to prevent the leak, you inflate the pillow. Again, it's very important to talk with the patient, explain what you're doing next, and ask him how he's feeling. Is it comfortable? Perfect. And then you clamp, remove the bulb, and you can start the therapy. The suggestion is for the peep valve, you have to make sure 
it is set at a minimum of 5 centimeters of water. Now to uh, move all the lines through the access port, you have to do it before the helmet gets pressurized. So when you put the helmet on, before you close the ac uh, patient access port, you move all the lines that the patient has through these access, little access ports with the opening. And it gives you a nice seal around the uh, tubing. And then when all your lines are done, or uh, and it's uh, safe, then you want it to pressurize the helmet. Now when you are giving uh, fluids, you can do it through this uh, uh, patient access port. It doesn't matter which one you will choose. To close it, again, you have to remember that you closed the first low cap tight, and then you close the access port. What it will do, it will prevent from popping off with increased pressure and it will prevent the leak around it. All right, now when you are taking it off, again, you will need two uh, physicians, two clinicians. You will need to open your patient access port, still have your flow going, take the underarm straps, deflate the pillow, stretch on the both sides of the helmet. And uh, David, can you help me on that side? And gently, oh, remove the helmet. Again, if you have lines or tubings, before taking the helmet off, you have to make sure that those lines are disconnected from these access ports, right? And it's free. Okay, thank you.